Doing design work for Airbnb properties is a great way of earning revenue for your home staging business. So today we're gonna to go over um, the thought processes behind the decisions that we made on this Airbnb design project so that you can incorporate these ideas in your next project. We're gonna help you understand why we choose the materials that we choose and why we um, tend to go for certain things over others just to give you an idea of, of how it's different from how you might actually stage a home that's lived in or even um, stage or design your own home. So as you know, this is a great source of revenue for a staging business. If you guys are thinking about incorporating Airbnb design into your staging services, you should check out the link below. We have a masterclass that we're offering for free and you can learn about how we price our staging services and you can learn the exact formula that we use so that you can incorporate these same ideas into your pricing structures. Let's talk about the property that um, we have to show you guys today, Erin. Yeah, this one was really special. It was. It was. We have this pretty fantastic homeowner. Um, she has inherited a condo from her mom and it's a beautiful place um, where the family wants to be able to gather and they came up with the idea to use this as an Airbnb or a short-term rental property as an investment um, long-term when they're not there enjoying it as a family. The homeowner had done some of her own renovations. She'd done a beautiful job um, in the kitchen and, yeah. and had kind of gotten stuck and, and the project came to a halt and that's when she called us. Yeah, and this, this, was, this property is a prime location. It was oceanfront in Carolina Beach. I mean, it's a, it's a special place, not just for the family's use, but also in terms of a short-term rental property and its potential value as, as an income earning investment. So this was a turnkey design project that we were given the opportunity to dress up for a very special client. This is a family property that uh, this family had enjoyed for many years and she wanted us to come in and freshen things up and make it something really special and memorable but she was also planning on putting it on the short-term rental market it was it's one bedroom and one bathroom and uh, we had to use some creativity to maximize the space that she had available and um, we're going to walk you through kind of the thought process that, that we went through as we made these material selections and why these materials are important, especially when you're, you're um, furnishing a short-term rental property. Right. So when you're doing staging, when we're doing staging, we use materials that uh, don't necessarily need to withstand wear and tear. Nobody's actually living on the furnishings that we stage homes with right. for um, in the real estate market. It's a totally different game when you're staging an Airbnb or a short-term rental property because not only are those spaces going to get used, they're going to get a lot of use. A lot of use. And like Aaron said, this is a beachfront property, so we have to take into consideration sun coming in the windows mm -hmm. and how that wears on furniture. Mm -hmm. We have to take into consideration sandy feet up mm -hmm. and down floors and we have to take into consideration uh, families with children mm -hmm. because even though this is a one bedroom we know from our personal experience that people like to pack into small spaces and you know beach vacations or family vacations so yeah. the the things that we're considering have to be really durable really durable so so we started with um the sofa and the sofa that we selected we got from ashley furniture and it's a dark gray and it's uh it's really durable again high quality furnishings are actually really important in short-term rentals in terms of longevity what we've learned over the years as short-term rental owners and also for the from the design work that we've done for these sorts of properties is it pays to invest in good quality because let's think about this what if you had a you know short-term rental property? You have a turnover period between you know 10 a.m. when someone checks out and 4 p.m. when someone else checks in. And say you put you know a cheap sofa, pull-out sofa, in that property, and and what if somebody broke one of the springs and it doesn't come out? 
and you discover that or your housekeeper discovers that during a turnover, well, then you're in a pickle because you've got to replace that sofa in a, a very short period of time. And especially right now, it's really hard to get furnishings off the floor of, of furniture stores. I mean, there are six, eight, nine month lead times mm -hmm. on just basic sofas right now. So, you know, it pays to invest on the front end mm -hmm. in these furnishings so that you don't end up in a situation where something's broken because you bought this, the cheapest one you could find. Right, right. And speaking of sofas and upholstery, the materials that are on those pieces need to be super durable. Yeah. So think about uh, fabrics like sunbrella fabrics, water resistant fabrics, um, you know, anything that can take some pretty aggressive wear and tear. Duck and canvas tend to be good. And then slip covering is a really nice option as well because those can be pulled off and washed and replaced, um, stain treated. Again, Erin, you mentioned dark colors. Mm -hmm. That's kind of key. You don't have to get super dark, but mm -hmm. you want something that's not gonna show every, you know, footprint and fingerprint. Yeah, yeah, and especially this this property wasn't specifically geared towards children and families, um, but other properties that we've done were. And you know, you if if you get like yogurt on a dark sofa, you can scrub it off real quick. And if you have sunbrella, you're going to have even better longevity in terms of those materials. So it's just another good argument for the fact that you you should invest in good upholstery. Um, in these sorts of properties, despite the fact, you know, that a lot of people, you know, you want to buy things secondhand, you don't want to spend a whole lot on your Airbnb, but um, again, you don't want the mechanical parts of any of these items breaking down on you, especially when you have a tight turnover. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so thinking more about the living room, since we're starting there, um, this was a relatively small space and right flat in the middle of the room are the sliding doors that take you out onto the oceanfront balcony. So we needed to make sure that we were keeping that, that walkway clear, um, but we also needed to bring in some tables that would have sort of multifunction purpose in those, in those spaces. So we chose for this small space nice round a nice round ottoman mm -hmm. that's upholstered on the top um, specifically that round shape um, is nice for tight spaces because yeah. there are not corners for people to bump shins on yes um, they're also very lightweight mm -hmm. um, pieces it can be moved mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. easy to move mm -hmm. um, and then we also chose another set of um, table ottomans um, mm -hmm. that go with the upholstered chairs that also function as uh, tabletops uh, with trays. So I think the point here is mm -hmm. the pieces that you're putting in your Airbnb or your rental property, not only do they have to be durable and be able to take a beating, they should be able to function in a variety of ways in the space. Yeah. Um, these stools that function as um, coffee tables or, or tabletops also function as footrests and then they also function as extra seating mm -hmm. yeah. in a very, very small space. Yeah, and yeah. So, so there are a couple of pieces here that are important that we want to reiterate. You've got extra seating with these two, these cube stools, which is great. You can set them up around the sofa and the round ottoman and play a card game on the ottoman, use that as a tabletop. Um, but also because you have a pull out sofa, you need to be able to move these smaller bits out of the way so you can make the bed at night. Mm -hmm. So all of these are kind of things that we're thinking about when we are looking at furnishings for, um, for these sorts of properties. We've got to be high quality, longevity, uh, you know, durability, and also movability because you, know, you might have a, a, a family in there and you've got to be able to kind of move things out of the way to make things work for within that space. So that brings us to the rug and how we decide what types of rugs that we use in a high traffic area like this. We love polypropylene for these sorts of projects. Mm -hmm. I mean, the truth is polypropylene is made of a recycled material and it is an indoor outdoor material. If you use a good thick rug pad, it feels like a nice living room rug. But the beauty of polypropylene is one, it's not expensive. And you know, these get a lot of wear, a lot of wear and tear. Um, and two, they're so easy to clean. Mm -hmm. It just makes perfect sense, especially in an Airbnb. So cleaning is super simple. You pick this rub, rug up, it's lightweight. So they roll up, you can take it outside, throw it down in the yard, throw it over the railing, 
hose it off, let it air dry. Mm -hmm. um, they're also very low pile, so it's very easy for housekeepers to, to get um, sand and dirt off of them. They're also very simple to spot clean uh, with a little spray cleaner and a rag for our small areas. So, yeah. um, and like Erin said, inexpensive. So your feelings aren't gonna be hurt a year or two, maybe three if you're lucky down the road when you have to replace them. Yeah, we, we lean towards polypropylene a lot more than something like jute or, you know, sisal because we love sisal and we love jute and we love the look of it, but that's not really ideal in terms of, you know, if you have someone spill a liquid on there, mm -hmm. you know, your jute rug's kind of shot. It's going to show a stain forever, even if it's just water. So, you know, polypropylene is not going to show that water stain and... Again, it's so easy. You literally, you roll them up, you take them out, and you don't have to use real special cleaners. Um, check with the manufacturers, but you can even use like super diluted bleach and like Dawn dish soap and scrub them down. Um, I can't tell you how many times we've done that with, with a, a power washer in my front yard. <laughs> Rolled up all the rugs from the Airbnbs, take them out, hose them down, and dry them out. So it's a, it's a, good, use of, it's a good use of resources. Let's talk about art and accessories for the living room. So what we wanted to do was bring in uh, something visually that just felt happy and beachy, of course. So it's an oceanfront mm -hmm. property mm -hmm. um, and light and lively. Mm -hmm. So we chose some really pretty, neutral, soft beach prints that you know are fairly universally appealing. Yeah, these the the pieces that we chose for this space over the sofa, they are kind of abstract beach prints, so they sort of read beach, but they don't scream beach, mm -hmm. and that was a request of the homeowner. Um, and also on the opposite side, we chose an abstract that has all those beautiful teals and blues and a little touch of purple, and it kind of reflects the you know the ocean that you're seeing outside the window. So it all ties together really beautifully. Yeah. Uh, the oversized piece that you see over these uh, two chairs that we're going to show you, it's a canvas. It's mm -hmm. really lightweight and that is really functional for a variety of reasons in an Airbnb property. You can see that we do use some glass and framed art. Those are small, they tend to be smaller pieces. We put them in places where they're not going to get bumped or knocked. But yeah. for other spaces like over beds often or really large pieces of art, we choose canvas because it's lightweight and again, inexpensive. It's inexpensive, mm -hmm. it's easy to hang and you can get a lot of bang for your buck, right? You can mm -hmm. get that wow factor and that comes that comes into play, especially in the photography, which we'll get into a little bit later. But you know, you want, we always want to maximize the, you know our client's budget and take it as far as we can. And we find that using this beautiful, large canvas art is a way of you know creating your focal point and bringing that layer of, of texture and color and life into a space. And speaking of accessories, light is really important. Again, for a lot of reasons, task lighting is really important for your guests. You want them to have lamps um, and lighting next to chairs or sofas for reading, television watching, just nice ambiance um, in the evenings. Um, but it also serves a, another function, which is to really make a space feel bright and light and cozy and welcoming. And welcoming. Um, you want people to have that feeling when they're in your space. You want them to feel good. And then it also serves to, to function really well for your photography yeah. uh, for the space, right? The yep. more light that you can bring in, the better the place looks. Yeah, that's a critical factor. And especially when you're talking about the short-term rental market, right? Your photography, we tell you this all the time, light sells houses. Well, the same rule applies in the short-term rental market. You know, people are scrolling, they're looking for a place to stay. And you, if you have good lighting, good photography, good edited photography, you're gonna catch that buyer's attention in the same way on, on the short-term rental market. You have just a split second to get their attention and, and to get them to focus on your photos and you know, turning on all your lamps, just like you would for an open house, um, you know, opening all your blinds, doing all of the tricks that we do as stagers to you know, create a light and bright and spacious place. The same rules apply in these Airbnb properties. Um, you know your punchy colors in your art to draw your attention to the to the photography and you know we edit our photos we make everything light and bright 
and it works. I mean, the proof is in the pudding, guys. When, when, when you look at the statistics of the houses that we've staged before they brought us in and the, and the kind of rental traffic that they're getting, the proof is there. I mean, you know, staging it well, using light correctly, and, and having beautiful photography, it works. It really does. So let's finish talking about how we choose accessories for the living room. Um, specifically, I think we should talk about how we choose what, you know, what pieces we use to just finish off the space and the greenery and why we choose that. First of all, you need to bring some greenery into the space. Um, know that Erin and I love to layer up accessories and greenery and blankets and pillows and we do a ton of that when we're staging. When you're staging for a rental property, you're going to look at it a little bit differently. We do. We do not bring in, we certainly don't bring in that same number uh, or that same volume. Yeah. Do we use throw pillows on sofas? Yes, we do. Yep. Um, but we're mindful of the materials that they're made of. Again, they need to be durable mm -hmm. and we use fewer than we would use in a, in a staging a real estate uh, for sale property. Yeah, they get thrown on the floor. They get thrown on the floor. I mean, let's mm -hmm. face it, you know, the kids are wrestling with them mm -hmm. and they get tossed on the floor when you're pulling out the, the, the sofa bed. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, don't, I, mm -hmm. we don't use, you know, really expensive pillows or also really cheap pillows that are, the feathers are going to start coming out. As far as throw blankets go, this is kind of a personal decision. We have used them and we don't use them. It is, it is nice for guests to have mm -hmm. a throw blanket or two at the most in a living room. Mm -hmm. um, the downside to that is it's more laundry for mm -hmm. your housekeeper. So, you know, take it or leave it. Yeah, we, we have a handful of uh, blankets that we leave available to our renters and we did use some in, in this property for the photos. Um, it definitely adds to the laundry factor, but people love them. They yeah. use them. Yeah, they're so, nice. So, you know, there's nothing yeah. better than coming in off the beach and mm -hmm. showering after a long day in the sun and just, you know, curling up on the couch and like watching some Netflix. So it is a, it's a nice thing to add for your guests. As far as the decor, the tchotchkes, the knickknacks, that sort of thing. Again, durability. This is yeah. not the place to bring in fragile glass crystal crystal <laughs> sculptures you don't want to use anything precious remember there are going to probably be small hands picking materials up mm -hmm. so think natural uh, natural materials trays artificial greenery goes a long long mm -hmm. way in these spaces mm -hmm. you can maybe do a pretty bowl um, think of materials like woods um, you know, stuff that can that, that can also serve a second function, right? If you use a pretty wooden bowl on your coffee table, it, it functions as a placeholder for the remote control for the television and a deck of cards, yeah. you know? Yeah. So these things, it, it can be beautiful. It can also be purposeful. Functional. Don't mess with the fussy, yeah. precious stuff. It will yeah. not last in an Airbnb. It will get broken. Yeah. It will get broken. And here's just a, a thought, jumping back to the photography. It is okay if you want to get a little over the top um, in accessorizing for the photo shoot. Don't misrepresent the space, right? right? But if you want to add an extra, you know, pillow or an extra blanket mm -hmm. to zhuzh up your photography, mm -hmm. that's okay. Um, just don't misrepresent what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. You want the photos to reflect exactly what people get when they walk into the house, or they could ding you in their review mm -hmm. and say it, it wasn't exactly what it looked like in the photos. So this property was kind of an open concept space. It has, you know, you've got your living room space, your dining space, and your kitchen kind of all in one area. And so um, having having physical space to fit all of that in and to include the bodies that are going to be sleeping in the property are uh, we had to uh, look for a table that was one round in shape and the reason that we choose round dining tables in these smaller spaces is that it's easier to get around the back of the table to sit down so you're not going to bump into the corner of the table and it kind of creates in the same way that we use round ottomans in the living room space it's easier to walk around a round surface without banging into it so on this property we used a uh, round top table it's fairly small i think it was 36 inches maybe 40. yeah yeah and four solid dining room chairs 
and we went with the solid wood dining room chairs in a light blue because when we wanted to kind of keep that light coastal feel but also the solid wood is easy to wipe down and they last a long time these are real high quality they're bramble chairs they're heavy mm -hmm. and they're not going to break if you know you know somebody rocks back on the back legs or something on mm -hmm. those chairs upholstered chairs in a dining space are really pretty but they're not very practical at all for no. for a rental property no. um, this is where food's getting dropped and dirty hands are, are on the on the seats so we strongly recommend you go for solid surface seats in any dining or kitchen area. Mm -hmm. And on that note, we, we like the kind of, in this, in this project, we liked using a little bit of the chippy distressed paint. And that, that has a twofold purpose. One, that's the, that's the bramble line and that's kind of the look that they sell. Um, it's mahogany wood and then it's, it's painted and usually distressed a little bit. Um, so that's the trend and it's the design. That's also very intentional because that doesn't show wear and tear as much over time. Right. If you have a distressed, uh, you know, surface, then that kind of, if it gets even more distressed, it kind of looks deliberate. Mm -hmm. It kind of shows, it, it covers up those sorts of flaws. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like to use a glass table in a small space because it visually doesn't take up a lot of room. I would discourage that in a rental property. It's a it's a liability. Yeah, um, it's, Again. it's hard to keep. It's hard to keep looking clean. Yeah, uh, yeah. Not to mention, if you get in a situation where someone breaks that glass top table, aside from the possibility of them getting hurt, aside of the possibility of liability and all that, you also you would have to replace that tabletop like this. So unless you have you know someone who can cut glass or you have an extra glass top in the owner's closet somewhere that you could swap out if that if that happened. Um, you don't wanna be in a position where you don't have a, a dining room table because somebody broke it and you can't replace it mm -hmm. within a six hour turnover. No. We did not put a rug in the dining space in this house and we typically do not use rugs in dining spaces of rental properties. Same reason. You know, it's an extra piece, uh, an extra thing that needs to be cleaned. Mm -hmm. It's not really necessary. It's a high traffic area. Mm -hmm. um, I would skip a dining rug in a rental space. Yeah, especially one of this size. There mm -hmm. was literally no space for us to add any additional rugs. Mm -hmm. um, so there were a couple of, of challenges that we ran into with this project. And one was the project timeline. Um, the, the, when, we, in, when we first started on this project with the homeowner, we, we knew that there were going to be some renovations. She put in some new tile in the bedroom and it's gorgeous and, and lovely. Um, so we ordered the furniture on the front end knowing that we had these projects ahead of us, but we were not expecting tremendous furniture delays in getting some of those upholstered pieces in. That's a, that's a, was a frustrating thing that we had to contend with and we did. So furniture delays, you also potentially will face other uh, challenges in your projects. We have faced uh, delays in foam production for furniture. Mm -hmm. We've faced supply chain disruptions. I guess the point is expect the unexpected. Mm -hmm. um, when you're doing an Airbnb property for a client, there's often a, a, an expectation for a fairly quick turnaround yeah. and and understandably right because the sooner you finish and their property is ready the sooner they can put it up on the rental market and start generating income mm -hmm. so everybody has the same goal it is really important that you give very fair expectations to your client mm -hmm. up front mm -hmm. that you can set a very reasonable um, time frame for your client based on what's happening in the industry at the time, mm -hmm. but you also have to set the expectation that things happen and will, you, you want them to be willing to, yeah, to understand that, that if delays happen, this is how you're going to manage it and, and this is what you're going to do. Yeah, what we've noticed lately is that we are serving not only as, you know, the designers for these projects, but also the mediators between the client and the furniture companies. So just be prepared for that, you know, and, and we just suggest that you communicate and you're as forthcoming as possible when you, when, you, um, when you hear of a furniture delay, that you communicate that with your client just to minimize the frustrations um, that they might experience. We have more rooms to talk about and we're headed that way. But first, if you aren't subscribed, 
give us a click and come join us. We have lots to offer you. We are Revisions Mentor and our platform is all about supporting home stagers in the staging industry. We offer tons of advice about how to save money and how to save time in your staging business, how to maximize your profit margins, um, ways to save money. I already said that. <laughs> There are lots of freebies for you guys on there. We have free master classes. Um, right now, there's a great one on pricing and how you set prices for your home staging business. It's invaluable. We give you the exact formula. It's all entirely free. Tons of other freebies on there, downloads, printables. Check it out. You don't want to miss it. That's revisionsmentor.com. So let's get back to this Airbnb property and let's move on to the bathroom. The bathroom. Yeah. So this bathroom um, was feeling um, outdated again, right? It just had, it had old paint mm -hmm. and um, it was tired and felt kind of, you know, yellowed and it needed a refresher, needed to feel bright and happy and nice. Yes, so we went with our go-to paint color in these beach properties. Um, sea salt works beautifully from Sherwin-Williams. Um, it looks beautiful and it photographs beautifully and it works really well with those blues and the greens and the teals that we use um, in heavy rotation in our in our beach house designs. Yeah, and we are all about saving our clients money and we really enjoy the process of repurposing. So we did not feel that this bathroom needed a complete overhaul. Mm -hmm. With the addition of some uh, new overhead lighting, which made, which made a huge uh, impact in the space, not only because it updated the fixture, mm -hmm. um, but it just brought a lot more light into the space, didn't it? Oh, yeah. 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 And then some bold art with the, you know, kind of this, I think we used some turtles and some, you know, some sea fans and things like that and a fresh new shower curtain. You're looking for things that pop. You're looking for colors that stand out so that you catch people's attention when they are looking at the photos on the booking platform. White reads really, really nice and really clean in a bathroom. And that is absolutely the feeling that you want to articulate in your photos. Yeah. So it also happens to be extremely uh, functional for housekeeping. So oh, yeah. go with white uh, shower curtains, go with heavy duty commercial grade washable liners that can be popped into the washing machine mm -hmm. um, and, and washed on repeat. Yep. Um, and we threw a throw rug on the floor in here. Uh, we sometimes use throw rugs, sometimes not. Yeah. We felt like this space could use um, the warmth and um, again, it's a it's a washable rug. Yeah, um, it's and practical. It, practical, right? And it had a it's a nice blend of colors, so it's not going to show um, dirt from foot traffic um, so easily. really easily. Yeah, yeah, and it's made of cotton, so you literally mm -hmm. just throw it in the washing machine. They're super durable. So what we often do for our properties is we'll have two. We have they're like rag rugs. We'll have one that we use, and if it needs to be washed, then you switch them out, throw the clean one down, take the, the other one home and wash it. So mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. all about those quick turnovers and keeping things as fright, it, bright and fresh as possible. And um, speaking of bright and fresh, that goes for the towels and the linens as well. Mm -hmm. um, white, 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 white. And there, there's, there are actually statistics about using white in um, spaces like rentals and hotels. It's the reason that hotels use white. Um, it, it's um, uh, people respond to it in a more positive way. And yeah. again, easy for your housekeeping. It is. So uh, on that same note, if you're not comfortable with using white, which we've used white in many, many properties, a lot of times people using makeup, using the white to take off uh, white towels to take off their makeup, it can stain. So we have, we've also used navy blue with great success, um, but you can't bleach it. So, you know, it's a toss up. You kind of have to decide where you're comfortable there. Um, but white in general, in terms of linens, is such a great idea because it can be stain treated, it can be bleached, and same thing in the bedroom. When we move, move on to the bedroom, you'll see that we used um, white linens on a queen size bed and really nice, high quality, like super heavy, durable, Olex queen size headboard. Um, again, using quality materials here is important because it's going to stand up the test to the test of time and it just looks good it looks like money in pictures and that's what you want to convey to your potential guests yes as Erin mentioned before this homeowner had uh, chosen this really stunning detailed pretty tile for mm -hmm. the floor 
And that was kind of the, the, the real big overhaul in this space. She installed it herself. It turned out incredible. And that was our inspiration for the decor and the design and the colors um, and materials that we put in this space. Mm -hmm. um, so we didn't want to cover up this gorgeous floor, but we needed to add some warmth. And so again, the polypropylene rug goes a long way here. You want your, your guests in your rental property to have something uh, warm underfoot, especially if you're working with a tile floor. So we put a nice um, eight by 10 underneath the bed and that gives a little extra pattern and color on the floor. Again, meeting all of those uh, requirements we've talked to you about in terms of functionality and durability. So the other thing that we want to keep in mind when we're staging a bedroom for an Airbnb is your throw pillows. You know, we like to layer up a bed with lots of happy colors and, and layers of pillows. And while it's not extremely practical in terms of use, uh, it makes those pictures really happy and bright. And again, that's going to bring in your renters. As far as furnishings go in a bedroom for a rental property, Erin mentioned the really good quality headboard that we used in the and the nightstands as well. Those are made well and built to last. We don't over uh, furnish a room, you know, as long as the room has adequate uh, closet space, then the only other piece you might want to add is um, a dresser. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily a needed piece, um, kind of as space allows. Mm -hmm. In this particular uh, property, we had were able to use one of the kitchen chairs um, it's as a as additional seating, you know, oh, yeah. to sit down and take your shoes off and on in the bedroom. Yeah. Then it can be pulled into the kitchen mm -hmm. if it's needed for seating there. Kind of, again, using pieces for multiple purposes. Yes, and if you don't, like, I know that there have been properties that we've, we've done Airbnb design work for um, where there wasn't enough room in the bedroom because we were trying to maximize bed space. That was more important because the more people you can sleep in a property, the more money you can make. So we didn't um, have space for dressers. And in this case, we didn't have space for a dresser. So what we use is luggage racks. And that way people can lay them out and put their luggage on it. Um, and they can put it in the closet if they need the extra floor space. So there are some creative ways that you can, you know, still furnish a property really well um, and also eliminate some of those really, really big heavy pieces if you don't have access to them or if you don't have space for them. All right. And speaking of creativity, our homeowner is very creative herself. She had an incredible vision for what she wanted to happen and, and the feel that she wanted for her family's vacation spot. And the cool thing that she did was fabricate her own window coverings. Yeah. Um, she came up with the concept and I think the point that we want to make, aside from the fact that they're really pretty in the space and they complemented the design that we put together so nicely, is that they added a layer of functionality that's super important in rental properties. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that your spaces are able to be properly lightened and darkened with whatever coverings you have on your windows. Mm -hmm. This goes for any space in the, in the property that a person may be sleeping. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes can even mean the couch if, you know, that if, you know, somebody crashes there. So you want to have curtains that offer another, enough room darkening Mm -hmm. um, to be beneficial, but also look pretty. And again, they need to be able to, to, to hold up to a lot of use. Yes. So nothing precious, yeah. um, but pretty and functional. That's right. Well, guys, if you like this information, if you want to hear more information about Airbnb design tips, um, if you're thinking about starting a staging business and you have specific questions, drop your comments in the comment box below, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and um, send some, some questions our way. We are happy to address them. Thanks for watching.